Hey everyone, so today I will be telling you about ultrasounds and their uses. And here I have already some pictures where you can see some uses of ultrasound. I'm going to speak especially about uh, medical scans, but just so you know, ultrasound is also how some animals communicate, so dolphins for example, or how bats get to know exactly where to go. Um, so to know if they are flying and they, they have objects or obstacles in their way, okay? So, ultrasound. You know that the human hearing range is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So any wave, any sound wave that is above, so that has a frequency above 20,000 hertz is known as an ultrasound wave. Now, ultrasounds, as you know, is how some animals communicate or get to know how to move around. They have some medical and industrial uses, and these are the uses that I need to tell you about, okay? So they can be used in prenatal scans, so checking for babies, and as you can see, can work on people or animals alike. Uh, medical observations of organs, such as kidneys or uh, damaged ligaments and muscles. And industrial imaging, finding flaws in medical, medi uh, metal castings. I forgot to add here, but um, I told you last video as well, you can use it to map the seabed, for example, or to get to know the depth uh, that, or the distance that you are either from rocks or from the bottom of the ocean, okay? So I'm, I'm going to talk about all of this now. So when you want to use for medical imaging, so scanners, uh, scans for example, you need to use this thing called a transducer, which is going to be placed in a body surface and produces and detects pulses of ultrasound waves. You also put a gel in the person or in the surface that you want the transducer to move about. And this is because you want to lubricate that area, so minimize the friction. So then you can move around easily with, um, with the detector and uh, the producer of the pulses, pulses, so you can form a better image, okay? So, each pulse from the transdu uh, transducer sorry, is partially reflected from the different tissues and boundaries that are in their path. And it, they return to the transducer as a sequence of reflected pulses from the boundaries. And because they arrive at different times, distances can be calculated. So you can have an idea of what is inside the person's body or how that organ is just by looking at the different pulses, they are partially reflected. So you have a little bit of a reflection in a part, another reflection in another part. And this is really how you get all these different images of the baby. I believe that I also have images here in the transducer. Actually, I don't. But for example, in the beginning, in the kitten, so you get to know um, how, how things look like from inside, okay? Now, why is this an advantage? Why is it good to use ultrasounds instead of x-rays, for example, for medical scanning? It's because ultrasounds are non-ionizing waves, so they are safer than x-rays, okay? And they can be used to scan organs and other soft tissues in the body as the waves are reflected at boundaries between different types of tissues. Now, if you remember some of my videos, I have mentioned about ionizing waves, the risk of ionizing, and about different organs that it depends on the, the, the type of organ, because some organs are more uh, sensitive than others. Um, so you definitely don't want to take an x-ray when you can get uh, an alternative method to get the same image or to get the same answer. Uh, in the 1920s, a lot of women were doing the baby scans using x-rays. So instead of using ultrasounds to, for the prenatal scans, they were using x-rays. Now, x-rays are ionizing. So there were a lot of babies that were being born with either or uh, with cancer, either they were born already with problems or they had very soon after they were born. And because this was such a um, um, an increase in numbers and people knew that this was not just by coincidence. So uh, after a while, it was no noticed that it was because they were using x-rays, which are ionizing, to check for babies. So now we have a way which is non-ionizing. So if a person needs to check a ligament that is damaged, if they need to check uh, kidneys, which are very uh, sensible, sensitive organs, if you want to check for babies, then you use the ultrasounds, okay? Because they are non-ionizing, so they are safer to use. And also, they because they are partially reflected, they give you a better image anyway. 
You can also use it in these things called the eye scan. Imagine that you want to use ultrasound to measure the length of an eyeball, which is needed to restore a blind person's eye by replacing the eye lenses with an artificial lens. Then you can again use ultrasounds. The pulse arrives at the surface and they are reflected back and the depth of the boundary is going to tell you what is the length of the eyeball. So the depth of the boundary is going to be the speed of the ultrasound times the time divided by two because as you know uh, distance equals speed times time and you divide the time by two because the time that you get is the time for the pulse to arrive at the boundary and come back so you want to divide the time by two because you only want the distance uh, or the depth of the boundary you don't want to know the full distance that was moved going in and back the a scans can also be useful to find the exact location of a kidney stone so you can then use powerful ultrasound waves to break the kidney stone into bits that are small enough to leave the kidney naturally. Okay, So again, there are several medical uses for ultrasound. You can also use it in industry. So industrial imaging, this is when you can use to detect flaws in the metal castings. So internal cracks, they do create a boundary inside the metal. So the ultrasound waves are therefore partially reflected from the boundary. So I have here an example so this is the the ultrasound probe and that's the metal there is a flow in here and because you have partially reflection this here they say total reflection this could still come through but you would get for example as it shows here in the signal you would get instead of just a wave coming and coming back going and coming back you get a little bit of a disturbance in the wave so something is being reflected in there and you know that if you were supposed to have just a smooth signal and something is there, you know there is a flaw. And then again, because you can use ultrasounds to find distances, you can know the exact location of the flaw. So it's amazing. You can also use to map oceans, for example, or to map the seabed. So again, you use a sonar, so it sends ultrasounds. They are sent, they go to the bottom of the sea, they come back to the detector, and then again, you use the same technique. You want to know the full distance, so you don't want to know, you want to know the depth, so you want to know what is the distance that it takes for the sound the ultrasound to go in and reach the bottom of the ocean. So distance is speed times time. So you do the speed of the ultrasound waves times the time taken, but you multiply by one half, which is the same as dividing the result by two, because you only want half of the time. You only want the time to reach the seabed and not the time to be reflected back, okay? You only want to know the time that it took to get to the seabed. And this is another example. So for example, different uh, timings that it takes for the ultrasounds to be reflected and what that means in terms of depth of the ocean, okay? So that is it about ultrasounds. So we spoke about the medical uses, what ultrasounds are, the medical uses and the industrial uses of ultrasound and why they are quite useful in terms of safety, so not being ionizing. I hope it made sense. Up to my next video, be happy and healthy. Bye.